Okay, welcome to part two. Today's project, I'm going to be looking at our cotter pins slash split pins. Um, I've gone through the car a little bit more thoroughly now, and it's a little bit worse than what I thought. There are a number. Um, the majority of the rear ones are missing, and uh, a few of these front important ones are missing. This was actually hand tight, um, probably a result of it um, uh, vibrating loose. So I'm not going to uh, bore you with some of the technicality of checking that the split pin will go into the hole in the, in the bolt slash shaft. Um, I, I did actually have to drill that one out. Um, it had a piece of rusted uh, cotter pin left in it. So that's going to be the theme, I think. I think part of the reason why this didn't happen was that probably he had sheared off cotter pins and, uh, and took a bit of a shortcut. So really the focus of today's project is, you'll notice that these cotter pins here are, are look new. They're shiny, they've got the, the zinc coating on them. I don't want to put um, shiny zinc coated cotter pins in a 108 year old Model T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blue the cotter pins. Here's, here's three I've prepared earlier. So this is fresh out of the packet. Obviously, the the type of cotter pin that we've got there at the moment, where they've been replaced. Uh, this is an attempt at bluing, uh, which was literally just heat up the the cotter pin and then uh, quench it in oil. Uh, that hasn't worked because the zinc coating is still on there. Uh, but this is a successful one. You can see it is nice and black, um, and that's a protective magnetite coating and very, very easy to, to do. So I'll just, uh, I'll just take you through the, uh, the setup I've got here to do that. So, yeah. All right, so what I've got here is um, the apparatus I'm gonna need to do what is effectively uh, a reverse electroplating of these cotter pins. So they are going to uh, be on the anode side of the circuit and the work, this is the uh, cathode, and it's going to attract the zinc from the cotter pins to itself. All we need to do is set up now a bath um, of an electrolyte solution, which will enable the zinc ions to, to travel onto the work. So um, one other thing I've needed to make up is these two little cables. These are just going to uh, connect to the terminals of, uh, of this DC power supply, um, the, both the anode and the cathode. Uh, so that the work can go into the solution. So um, the electrolyte solution I'm going to use is, is inert. It's not poisonous. Um, you can uh, easily get it from a chemist or a supermarket. So I'm going to use Epsom salts and water. So uh, don't necessarily know what the optimal kind of concentration is. I'm just going to grab a small amount of Epsom salts, pour some water in, and we'll get started. So I bought pure Epsom salts from a bath, kind of spa bath place online. Uh, I bought pure Epsom salts because I, um, I do want to do some electroplating. I have to do some, some cadmium coatings for my mini when I get around to that. So yeah, just literally, uh, that'll do for, for the um, Epsom salts. it up with some water. You need just enough water to cover the work. So that'll be plenty. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do all of these at once if I can, just in the interest of time. So they're going to thread on thread under here. So in the interest of time, I won't put you through the threading on process. We'll come back when I've, when I've finished that. Okay, here's one of the terminals. Um, this will be the anode. You can see they're neatly lined up on there. I've just tied a bit of a bow at the end to stop them falling off. But that is just going to go into the solution. 
and it's going to connect to the red wire which is a positive terminal All right. so we wouldn't expect anything to be happening at the moment um, this uh, as I mentioned is our cathode that gets connected I'll wrap the wire around here and they can go in the solution you don't want these to be touching at all you'll form a very good circuit if that's the case and short circuit the whole thing Okay, and that is just on our black negative terminal. Okay. Right. All right, so now we're ready to flick the switch. Let's just set this thing to five volts. Let's flip the switch to make sure it's on. It would help if I plugged it in. Alright. Going a bit too fast here. Let's slow it down. Didn't get to five volts. And let's see what you can see in here. Cast some light on the subject. So you can see a bubble's forming on the negative terminal. So just uh, to recap, the zinc on the positive terminal is going to try and make its way through that fluid onto the negative terminal. Now, this will take probably 15 minutes or so. Now, I'm just um, what you can see is you can see the cotter pins starting to lose some of their shine. Um, I'm not going to sit here for 15 minutes. Um, we'll come back when we've got some progress. Okay, we're picking up the action at the end of this process. Um, you can see how the uh, cotter pins are significantly darker in colour. They've lost all their shine. Um, we've still got some very obvious deposition going on there. Um, that's, uh, that's all I'm going to do on the reverse electroplating. What I'll do is I'll take them out of the bath, I'll give them a rinse off, and then I'll set you up and take you through the second part of the process arguably the most fun part of the process okay so for part two of the process all we need here is a small amount of just regular motor oil you can use old sump oil if you like um, i believe you can even use water oil quenches a little bit better a uh, little blowtorch and your freshly prepared reverse electroplated split pins. Um, I'm using an old set of pliers to hold um, and this is going to be fairly simple. Get it nice and hot. And it's as simple as that. So I'll fish 
those out of there. I've got a little bit of a cloth here. Give them a wipe. And there you have it. What I'm also going to do is, um, those who have seen the first uh, part in the series noticed that there were some cup head bolts holding the uh, starter switch to the floorboards which uh, have the same zinc treatment. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to blue those up as well. There we go, there's two of them. So uh, yeah, so that's a, a very simple process. Uh, you don't even need a, a, a specific DC transformer. Just get anything that can make 5 volts. Uh, it doesn't uh, have to sustain much, much amperage. I think it was only pushing at 1 amp at, uh, at 5 volts. So, um, so yeah, I think you don't need to invest too much in that. But that's, uh, that's that part of the process. I'm going to spend some time now finishing all of this off. Um, okay, I thought I'd take you outside and show you the finished product. So that's... Uh, a complete set now. Um, really nice colour, blue, black, and uh, they'll look the part when I get that job done. So yeah, a really quick job. Um, you saw how long it took to to heat up one of those pins and drop it in the drop it in the oil, and uh, you just had to wait around for the um, reverse electroplating. So uh, so that's uh, that's the next part finished, and I'm going to move on now and and see how much drilling I've got to do on on some um, some bolts and shafts and other things which are missing cotter pins so I'll get on to that now all right before I get started I just wanted to add a little bit of commentary on cotter pins and the right and wrong way of doing it I've done a little bit of research here um, particularly on the Ford forum uh, Model T Ford forum now um, apparently the way Henry Ford did it back in the day in the factory was the the pin would not be split so the pin would get pushed through and then both tines of that pin would just be bent over. That was a, a time-saving uh, time principle. So um, these, these three pins here have been done correctly. So you, you must get the head uh, properly into the castellated nut. Uh, so if you can see this one, this is done incorrectly with his head not even sitting in the castellated nut and his legs spread out like that. So the correct way of doing it is head in, fold one leg up and over the end of the bolt and one leg down, downwards. Um, some people tend to wrap one around sideways. Um, it's probably six of one, half a, dozen, half a dozen of the other, but this is a standard way of doing it. So that's the way I'll be doing it. Um, I'm not in it for um, concourse prize money, um, doing it the Henry Ford method, the time saving method. So, um, so yeah, I'll be replacing these shiny ones um, and obviously fitting the ones that are missing. So without further ado, I'll crack on to that. I want to attack this one. What do we reckon that size is? Three quarters or an inch? That's an inch, let's have a look. Not quite. It's 15 sixteenths, in case you were wondering. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is well, I can see through that hole, which I can. The clean freak in me wants to clean each one of these up as well. Not today though. Well, I think I can see the issue here. Hmm, interesting. They can't be the right nuts. I 
yeah that shoulder is too uh, it's too um, it's too thick or the castellations aren't deep enough to reach the hole so I'm going to have to source the right nuts for that one on both sides got the same issue there comparison they are identical side to side although one does look a lot older than the other one Definitely won't fit a split pin in there. I'll take you in, show you up closer. You can see that. It's sort of half of the holes covered over. It's not going to work. All right. Okay, this is what a broken off cotter pin looks like. Let's try and get you in there a bit better. So you can sort of see half the hole is, a, is occluded and you've got to get your drill out and drill them out. So um, that's what I will be doing. Alright, let's have a look. A bit blind here behind the spear. One of the few cars you can put your hand through the wheel. Gee, yeah, I make things look easy. It's almost like I've done one of those before. So, get back at it with this thing. plus year old bolts, hey? Feels like it's a cross thread. I need some juice. <clears throat> Mechanical sympathy kicked in. We're right back at it on this side, and I've um, tightened that to the right place. That's, um, and I've lined up, I've lined this hole up, which is pretty good. So again, it goes in. Make sure the head. Give that a bit, a bit of Tonya. Make sure the head engages like that. And this part goes. That's the longest leg. Oops, That. 
So that's uh, two down, two down, and on the rear axle about 50 to go. Um, and that's uh, that concludes today's cotter pin adventure. See you in the next episode.